What is going on everybody? Chris here. We are currently in downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we're about to test out May Mobility's RoboTaxi Autonomous Taxi Service. It just started here in Ann Arbor, and one of the coolest parts is it's actually free. So we're looking at their app here right now. This is the serviceable area. So it's not a really huge area, just a little bit of downtown Ann Arbor that you can see there that you can be in. So you can confirm your location. You can just hit uh, the GPS icon there. And that's where we are. If I hit confirm my location, I can then set a destination. So let's go over here to the other side. I'll need a ride back <laughs> as I parked here. Um, we can just go, you know, about to here should be fine. Let me actually look around a little bit. We could go a little farther, but I think if we go, you know, all the way over here, it's just going to be one road the whole way. Whereas if we go here, we're going to have to do a few more turns at least. So I think this looks pretty good. We'll go right on the edge of their serviceable area here. And we'll say set my destination. And now we're finding you the perfect ride. So book this ride. So it'll take 12 minutes and that'll be that. So book this ride. Drop off will be 12.35 p.m. Your ride will be arriving soon. After you board, um, scan the QR code to confirm you're ready. We are about to ask you to approve granting access. Yep, that's fine. Go ahead and use my cameras on my phone. So it says pick up in 12 minutes. So they won't be here for 12 minutes. Um, well, walk to pick up. Oh, we have to walk to the pickup. Oh, okay, so they can't even pick us up here. That's interesting. So let's get out of the car and head over to the pickup location, I suppose. So you can actually see I used auto park to park here. So my car parked itself in that spot, did a really good job. All right, so we're just about there. I feel like at this point, I might as well just walk to where I was gonna go uh, because it's really close um, to where we are. But I'm gonna hang out here. It still says six minutes to pick up, so they should be here soon. Um, and we'll check it out and then hopefully they can also drive me back to my car or of course I'll just request one more ride and that'll be a bit longer one than this because this one is gonna be much shorter than I thought I had to walk um, So far just to get to the pickup point. Okay, so here it comes. That's the car right there And they went right past I don't know. Okay, so they're gonna park over there and I'm gonna cross and go get to them Okay, so I'll hop it in the back here. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So what sensors uh, does the car use to drive itself? Uh, so it mainly uses LiDAR, and oh. then it has um, a 360 degree view with the camera. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I like that view on the screen up there. Yeah. <laughs> so is it driving already? It is not right now. Okay. Um, we need to manually pull out a stop. So okay. But then, yeah, um, it'll be driving itself as soon as I get through this light. Okay, great. Yeah, as far as right now. So now the car is doing all of this? Yeah, that whole stretch uh, back there from that light was all the car. Cool, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, as a safety precaution, we are supposed to just kind of rest our hands gently on the wheel. Sure. Um, in case we need to intervene. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that was all the car. Do, do you have to intervene a lot or is it pretty good? No, it's pretty good. Um, yeah. I'm, I'd say I'm actually like pretty impressed since I started working here with like how good it is. Cool. Um, most of the situations that we do need to intervene with aren't mm -hmm. really even like safety related. It's more so just like weird things that trigger the car sometimes. Sure. So, so like, uh -huh. even all those cars like parked up uh, on the side of the road. Yeah. If one of those wasn't like kind of perfectly straight with the curb and was more angled outwards. Okay. That would trip up the car because it can, it basically does everything out of safety. So if something's a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah. Then it'll kind of just stop. Oh, okay. So unprotected turns, it's like a little iffy or does it ask you for assistance? Yes. Okay. Um, 
But as far as like straight through traffic lights mm -hmm. or four-way stops, it can do all that. Okay, cool. Mainly just the unprotected lefts are uh, what it needs assistance with. And it's like at the four-way stops, it's good. It's like taking its turn and everything. Yeah, it um, is actually like extremely cautious. Sure. If anybody's like a little bit moving out or in, like it'll wait for uh, basically anybody. Right, okay. So a little bit of braking. That was the car yeah, seeing probably that guy that. or something? Yep. Very cool, okay. So yeah, and then that's kind of what we're trained for is like most of the time when the mm -hmm. car does something, I can kind of look around and pick out like, oh, it was probably because of, uh, you know, that and kind of see that in advance. And you can like give feedback on that? and Yeah, so we make sure to log anything that the car might do that like um, isn't in its typical behavior mm -hmm. or uh, anything like that really because the car also, by driving itself and dealing with different situations, yeah. gets smarter and smarter over time. Yeah, um, okay. Because it just collects more data, basically. Right. So that's important. Yeah, that's a big part of it, is to kind of keep progressing forward. Um, is there any, like, when it starts snowing, will you guys still be operating, or is there anything like that that would um, stop it? I do not know about snow for sure, okay. but I would assume that we probably will continue to operate just more manual driving. Oh, sure. So you would just, you know, take over if the car's having trouble. Yeah. Okay. Because um, even like when it rains, it does mess with the sensors, unfortunately. Okay. Like light rain, heavy rain, or? Uh, pretty much all of it, all unfortunately. Of it? Okay. Because it, I mean, the, um, the like heavy rain is definitely worse because with the LiDAR, it's only gauging stuff off of like what light can pass through. Oh. And unfortunately light can't pass through. It doesn't think that light can pass through rain. Sure, yeah. So it's it just is. seeing all these little objects just uh, okay. everywhere. Um, so then could it maybe fall back to the cameras or? Um, I'm not the right person to ask <laughs> sure. about that. No, that's okay. Um, I mean, you probably know more than I do. <laughs> yeah. As far as I know, though, we've just basically been told, like, you know, if there's any weather conditions, you know, be extremely cautious and mostly go in manual. Sure. So do they have, like, a level designation? Like, is this a level three or level four or self-driving car? Oh, um, I do not know. Okay, so the first ride went pretty well, very smooth. Actually, I was surprised by that. We had one little phantom break where a, a pedestrian was kind of coming out into the street. You could feel the car hesitate for that. Um, but the car did all that, handled it, and he didn't take over. At the end there, I think because of some construction, uh, we couldn't get to our exact destination. So you can see the driver took over for that final right turn. So I'm gonna get a ride back to my car so we'll be able to take one more ride that'll be a little longer. And he's gonna pick me up right here where I am. It'll probably be the same driver. But anyway, um, it was very smooth. It was hard to tell the difference between the driver and the car. He said he had to keep his hands on the wheel at all times for safety, and he wasn't sure if it was a level four, level three, whatever system. Um, there was a loud computer in the back, and I, I got some footage of it just like humming away back there, so I hope the audio was okay. Um, but yeah, so let's uh, wait for this second ride and, and see how it does on the next one. Okay, so our ride is pulling up now, and I assume it's gonna be the same guy. You want me to buckle up or? Oh, sure, yeah, that'd okay. be great. All right. I don't know, I mean, legally I don't have to, right? No. In the back, but not. I don't know if it's company policy. I okay. think we're just supposed to encourage it. Cool. So that was all the car there? Uh, partially. It's, it hesitated and then I pushed it manually through the intersection. Cool, interesting. Because that, that's one of the things too, it does have the tendency to just wait for everybody. Okay. Um, to try to be as safe as possible. Right. So you just give it a little nudge. Yeah, and, and then it... it'll go. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, that's a big part of it too, is just kind of finding the balance in between mm -hmm. where you can just like slightly push it in the right direction at times and then it knows. So you're just kind of giving it some guidance. Uh, cool. When it needs it. It's really fun. I've been waiting for self-driving cars a long time. <laughs> yeah. I remember Google, you know, talking about it 10, 10 or more years ago and it just seemed like it'd be impossible, but we're getting there. Oh yeah, looks like I got another pickup from where I'm dropping you off at. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so we can see our map here. Yeah, we're off the route right now. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, so I can't self-drive up here. Oh, so it'll only do it if you're on the route. 
Yes, All currently. Right. Got it. But I know that part of our plan is also to expand the route. Yeah, of course. Uh, a of lot. Course. Right, I, this just started, what, this week, right? Yeah, on okay. Monday it actually just launched to the public. Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty new. That's the unfortunate thing with a lot of the construction is that when you have to go a couple roads over, it usually isn't on the route anymore. So now we're about to be back on the route. Yes. So pretty much after I turn here, Got it. Um, it will be able to go back into autonomy. This dumpster is another common thing that uh, gives it problems. Okay, it does a little bit out more than it expects the cars to be. Um, so, do you have to do that part? Uh, no, it's gotten, and that's kind of the thing that's really impressive to me is like when I first started driving, it would be super hesitant and like pretty much not go past it at all. <laughs> yeah. And now, since it's uh, had time and adapted and learned, now it doesn't go past it super fast, but it does go past it slowly. That's great. So, yeah, I mean, you can, I think it's amazing when you can just like visually see, even in the span of like a month, now it learned um, something that it didn't know before. Oh yeah, like it's contending with this Amazon van over here. <laughs> That's awesome. So nobody knows what to do. Yeah. Right, so cyclist. Yeah, and this this car has no problem with just indefinitely sitting. Yeah, well, letting that's, everybody else go. That's safe, so it's, I, I'm, I'm not surprised. You know, yeah, you'd rather have that than it being aggressive and cutting someone off or yeah, causing an accident. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know about Tesla's self-driving beta thing? Oh uh, yeah, my yeah. brother actually has a Tesla. Oh cool. Um, and okay. that was like my first. Some, I mean, obviously it's a lot different than this. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Riding in his Tesla was the first kind of experience with self-driving stuff that I had. Awesome. And thought it was very cool and interesting. Yeah. And yeah, he was actually just telling me about the, isn't it like for cities now? Yeah, it does everything. I mean, it's kind of like, the, I, that's that's my car, it does that. And so I'm kind of comparing it to that. Gotcha. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, the, the Tesla doesn't use LiDAR, that's kind of the biggest difference. It just has the cameras. Yeah. But, um... I mean, it's just funny, like, the little hesitations and stuff are very similar. Yeah. And the, the waiting at the stop signs. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of accelerator tapping, that's for sure. Yeah, I have not uh, been in, been with my brother since the beta thing has came out, but oh, okay. I, the highway was, I always thought, like, it was so good on the highway. Yeah, um, it's amazing. Very smooth. Yeah, I just, I always am like, I can't believe, like, normal people can, like, buy and own this. Yeah. We're waiting. Oh yeah, and that's it, typically, or at least right now, it does not turn right on reds, even if it's able to. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but we try to be good street citizens, so like if someone's waiting behind us or is getting impatient, like we'll just manually turn right on red. Okay. But right. otherwise, we'll just kind of let the car go on green. Is that an instance you can just tap the accelerator, or do you have to steer and stuff? Uh, so yeah, there's actually, you can take over auto to manual mm -hmm. by turning the steering wheel or putting enough pressure on either one of the pedals. Oh, okay. One of the things we try to do too is have it be like a smooth transition when we do need to go into um, manual and not have it be like abrupt. Oh, are we picking somebody up here? Yeah. Oh, got it. Okay. And then we're going to my destination? Oh, this is where I was dropping you off. Really? At. Yeah. Oh. All right. Oh, I get it, because it can't go back to where I want it. All right, this is yeah. fine. All right, cool. Thank you. So the footage you're looking at here is me driving, full self-driving beta, the next day. And I was really thankful that I did this drive a day later, because I spent a lot of the rest of the day really thinking about that May Mobility Drive. Now, I attempted to do the same route, but the Tesla decided to take different streets to get there. And the other problem I had is the May Mobility car could not reach either destination I chose for the first drive or the second drive, so it didn't go exactly where I was planning. And the car did a very good job in the short two drives I took with May Mobility, but the driver had a lot of involvement. He took over a few different times and he started the trips and he ended the trips. And while there were no big issues, no weird lane changes or anything, the car did have several small phantom brakes that I could feel. And it just made me feel so much better 
about what's currently in my car with Tesla's full self-driving beta. Now, the main reason for that, even though we see a lot more mistakes with full self-driving beta, is the sensors used in my car in a Tesla are far fewer than the sensors used in that main mobility car. The Tesla car just has eight cameras on the outside, and they're not even that high quality of cameras, and it can do and attempt more than that main mobility car can currently attempt, and the Tesla can do it anywhere, whereas May Mobility and a lot of the other autonomous taxi services are geo-locked. Now, May Mobility uses LiDAR, and as the driver said, in even this light rain that you're looking at here, the LiDAR is not going to work because the rain is going to get in the way of those sensors. Another really impressive thing about Tesla's cars is it uses a small computer behind the glove box. The May Mobility car had a huge computer in the back with really loud fans, and I'm sure that uses a lot of energy also. So while Tesla still has a lot of work to do to get full self-driving beta a little more solid and ready for level four operation, it made me a lot more confident that the answer truly is software and hardware is not the problem. This autonomous taxi had more sensors, more types of sensors in different locations on the car, and it still had some of the strange quirks that I experienced in my Tesla, such as slow reaction times at stop signs, small phantom brakes here and there, and needing assistance at the beginning and end of drives. I really hope to be able to experience something like Waymo in the future. I think there'd be a lot more magic there if you didn't have a driver in the driver's seat, but overall this experience made me really appreciate my car a lot more than I did. I am really picky when it comes to beta and all the strange moves that it makes, and I want everything smoothed out to perfection, but seeing this other autonomous vehicle with some of the same small issues was pretty enlightening. So overall, I'm really happy with Tesla's progress, and I think we're going to get there sooner than a lot of people realize. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and you will see me in the next video.